Hey, vinyl community. Welcome back to another episode of RB's Vinyl Corner. And thank you for tuning in on yet another one of my videos. Um, if you like my channel, uh, I would really appreciate it if you would uh, subscribe so that I can also keep you posted on every new video that will come up. Also, uh, I always love to read the comments you leave behind uh, underneath the videos. And it's a good way and a nice way to interact with each other and discuss some of the records that I'm showing. So in the previous video I showed you a wonderful Elvis Presley record and as you know I made a lot of Elvis Presley videos in the past and I will surely uh, continue doing so because I know that a lot of you, a lot of the viewers of my channel are actually Elvis Presley fans and they kind of like expect, uh, expect me to do this. Uh, but occasionally I want to uh, uh, drift away a little bit from the Elvis thing and show you some of the other stuff because I think it's also nice to show you what other stuff that I like and uh, hopefully uh, we can learn also uh, appreciate some other stuff from each other. So if you are an Elvis Presley fan and you tune in on this video, please keep watching because uh, this might also be interesting for you because I'm going to discuss an artist and a record today uh, that is actually long overdue. I should have done this way before. Um, but uh, with the release of a fantastic box set uh, at the end of last year, I think uh, the time is right to do this now. I'm talking about British rock and roll star Shakin Stevens. Now, last year he uh, released a massive uh, box set that I'm going to show you here. It's called Fire in the Blood. It's a 12-inch box set containing 19 CDs and a great book with a lot of information and pictures. Now, I'm intending to discuss this box set and the uh, companion vinyl album also uh, in great detail, but I will leave this for the next video because I'm gonna record this video in two parts. In this video, I just wanna show you and tell you a little bit about uh, how I uh, came to know his music and I wanna show you my most favorite record of this artist first. So I'm going to split this video up in two parts. Uh, I'm going to discuss uh, one of the albums in this video in the next video. We're going to discuss this fantastic box set. It's amazing. Now, <laughs> I remember very well um, how I uh, first learned about Shaking Stevens. My father had a massive, like really a, a massive collection of records. And... Um, he he literally indoctrinated me with Elvis Presley music. Like from very early on, when I was just a little kid, um, he would uh, let me listen to Elvis Presley a lot. He often told me that um, when I whenever I was a baby uh, and I was crying, uh, he would play an Elvis Presley record, and um, it would always silence me. And I heard that story many many times. And uh, so when I grew up as a kid, uh, he would always make me those uh, mixtapes with Elvis music on it and uh, that I could play in my Walkman and in the, on my, on my uh, cassette deck. And by the time I got into my early teens, um, I got my own stereo set. You know, these black plastic things with a record player, a double cassette deck and a CD player because at the end of the 80s and in the early 90s, the CDs were really um, gaining a lot of popularity and the records and the cassette tapes slowly but surely uh, went to the, to the background and eventually disappeared from the whole scene. But when I was just a little kid, of course, I got some pocket money, but CDs were way too expensive. So I would never buy CDs uh, in the very, very beginning. But my father, and I remember he had, um, he had a suitcase that uh, was stored in a cabinet in the hallway. And that suitcase was filled with Elvis Presley cassette tapes. And in the beginning, he would sometimes just allow me to pick one of those cassettes and uh, made, make my own copy of it and I could play. So I would go to, to, uh, to a store, I would make a copy of the sleeve and I would copy in uh, the tape, and that's how I collected my own Elvis Presley tapes in the beginning. Now, when I got that stereo set with the record player and the CD play, uh, player, sometimes my father would allow me to flip through his records 
and uh, pick pick an album and make a copy and, um, and have fun with it as long as I was very very careful now one day <clears throat> As a little kid, I think maybe in the end of the 80s, maybe early 1990, 1991, I can't exactly remember. But I do remember that he allowed me to flip through his records and I was flipping through his record. And uh, I picked out uh, a record that caught my eye and uh, that was this album, Shaky. And I picked it out and I was kind of like attracted to the sleeve because it gave me like this Elvis Presley feeling. Now, of course, this is not Elvis Presley, but you can ma imagine that when I saw this, um, I it kind of reminded me of it. It's obviously that here is a guy with a lot of charisma and the way he's standing there and pointing uh, and with the, the, the pink jacket, it, it, it really smells like uh, 50s rock and roll music. So. And because I loved that kind of stuff when I was a kid, I loved rock and roll. I, I listened to Buddy Holly, Roy Orbison, Jerry Lee Lewis, um, Chip Berry, Eddie Cochran. And of course, I was a huge Elvis Presley fan. So when I picked, picked this one out, it immediately caught my eye. And I remember looking at my father and my father had, had this big smile on his face. And he said, yes, son, I think you're going to love that one. And I took it with me to my room. And I remember, like, my father told me he brushed the record first. I brushed it with a record brush, put it on the, on, the, on, the, on the turntable. And the moment I dropped the needle to the first song of this album, and I heard the first notes of the opening track, Mona Lisa, it blew me away. My jaw must have been dropping to the floor when I heard it because it was something I never heard before. Now, of course, uh, it's rock and roll music, but it sounded classic and modern at the same time because it's recorded in 1980, 1981, and so it's, it's obviously the sound and the, and, the, and the production is very modern, but it, at the same time, it, it just, it was like real, like classic rock and roll. And immediately I was like, I was hooked. And then of course, when the next songs of this album played, like You Drive Me Crazy, which I, I, by the way, was a big hit also. I'm knocking, don't you look good, don't bop me baby. Pure rock and roll. And then on the B side, one of my favorite songs, Don't Tell Me Your Troubles. This time, baby, you're a child. This album, from the beginning to end, turned my world upside down. And I consider this album still today, like many, many years later, and many, many copies later, by the way, also, uh, I still consider this album one of my most favorites of all time. This is certainly a very, very uh, integral part uh, of the soundtrack to my life. And I still play it a lot and it, it, it really, it, I, I, I never get enough of this one. I can play this anytime, any day, any time of the week, any hour of the day and I will still love this. And I remember that, <laughs> I remember that, uh, okay, so I, I, I could make a copy of this one. So I taped this on a, on, a, on a tape and then I went back to my father's collection and flipping through, hopefully to find more of this uh, great artist. But uh, this, unfortunately, was the only record he had his, his, in his collection. I mean, it was a very, very popular one in the beginning of the 80s. Um, this is obviously a time when we had like a big revival of rock and roll music with uh, the likes of um, the Stray Cats and, uh, and, and a lot of other artists. Uh, and I think that the, the, the Grease movies had a lot to do with that also. They really caused revival of 50s and 60s music. And... Uh, but uh, unfortunately, this was the only record my father had, which is kind of strange because Shaky Stevens in the beginning of the 80s, especially the first half of the 80s, was like a hit machine. He scored hit after hit after hit after hit record. And um, especially in the UK and in Europe, he was very, very popular. And he is actually credited for having more 
hit singles in the charts in the UK than Michael Jackson. So that says something, I think. Um, and the, the man is still very active today, not recording a lot of stuff anymore, but he's still performing and touring and all that stuff. And of course, the new box set that was released last year will also spark some new interest as well. But this record, guys, so when I found out that he did not have more Shaky Stevens records, I started flipping through all these hit compilation records he had in his collection. And then I would bump into songs like um, uh, like This Old House, which was a big hit, uh, Give Me Your Heart Tonight, and uh, I remember very clearly also Cry Just a Little Bit, which was a big hit in 1983. So what I would do is I would pick those records and pick those songs out, put them on my cassette tape, and that was my first Shaky Stevens cassette. It was this album together with a couple of uh, hit singles that were uh, uh, present on other records. And then I started looking for more stuff, of course, and I could not afford CDs. And I think by the time the only two CDs I would bump into were uh, a whole lot of Shaky from 1989, and uh, that's two kind of music, rock and roll from 1991. But they they were way way too expensive to uh, to purchase. So I went to flea markets, to thrift stores, to see if I could find vinyl or cassette tapes and so occasionally I would bump into a cassette tape or a vinyl record. Some of the earliest vinyls I bought of Shaky Stevens were the Hot Dog album which is the Dutch version of the Take One album and uh, the Bob on Stop and Give Me Your Heart Tonight. You, you would bump into those a lot and still today you can still find them at almost every thrift store or flea market you go to. And, uh, but it wasn't until I started collecting vinyl again uh, a couple of years ago that I actually started to complete and to expand on my Shaky Stevens collection. Uh, this will always stand out, by the way, as my uh, absolute favorite. So let, let me just show you um, what I went through when I picked this for the first time. So we have the wonderful sleeve. You can see Shaky here with his green jacket. This is actually a scene from the You Drive Me Crazy uh, video where you can see him in that empty house with the Marilyn Monroe posters. By the way, if you've never heard of Shake Seas before and you got interested, uh, I will put a couple of his videos as a link underneath my video so that you can uh, you will have a head start and, uh, and, and get to know him. Flip side, it's the same beautiful pink jacket song track listing here. This is, uh, by the way, Dutch pressing. Um, and then it came with an inner sleeve. I put the record, by the way, in a in a new fresh inner sleeve. But this is the original inner sleeve, which had all the lyrics on one side, and on the other side, uh, a picture of Shaky on a car, and then the incredible amount of musicians that worked here with on the, on this album. We have like uh, Mickey G, which played a lot of guitar for him, and the guitar sound on Shaky's albums is very very distinctive. It's really really. Uh, a typical uh, part of, of his um, uh, of his band, and you can really it really stands out in his uh, music. Um, uh, it was uh, produced by Stuart Coleman, who also played bass here, and uh, a lot of other uh, very well uh, versed musicians uh, participating on this album. The production is absolutely amazing. Um, Still, the, the album is from 1981, but it's still absolutely fantastic. And there are not a lot of rock and roll albums that sounds as fresh and exciting as this one, I can tell you for sure. Um, like I told you, I put the record in a blank inner sheet. And we have the beautiful vinyl, of course. And you're also always interested in seeing with the Epic label. He was signed. Uh, at Epic in uh, the end of the 70s uh, and he recorded a string of albums for the Epic label all the way up to the early 90s. And all these Epic albums were collected in a box set that was released in 2009 which was a beautiful box set and if you are interested in seeing that um, if you go back to my very very early beginnings on this channel you will find a very detailed video where I show you the whole uh, original box set in detail. It's not nearly as comprehensive and expanded as the new box set, but it's surely an interesting set on its own as well. So this is a uh, Shaky. Uh, again, one of my favorite albums. This 
comes right next to uh, Elvis Presley's debut album uh, as far as my favorite rock and roll albums go but in general this is really one of my favorite albums ever um, try it out give it a spin you can find it on Spotify you can find a lot of those tracks on YouTube uh, you can download it somewhere or just go out and pick a copy of this album for yourself uh, but uh, it's really worth listening to and actually I'm really curious if you never heard it before and you start listening to this thanks to this video please let me know in the comments below because I'm really interesting uh, interested in hearing your opinion about this and if you know the album uh, revisit it and feel and, and try to experience it in the nowadays and tell me what you think about it um, great album guys shaky 1981 now in the next video i will go into great detail uh, of the the new box set uh, so look out for that one and, and i hope you will tune in again when i come up with that one but in the meantime uh, enjoy this shaky album and i see you in the next video